when I get the money booked to my account, um, where does the bank get the money from? Is it from um, uh, from deposits, customer deposits, as the financial intermediation theory claims? Or is it from excess reserves at, say, at the central bank, as the fractional reserve theory says? Because without excess reserves, you can't do the new lending. Or is it just, you know, created out of nothing, out of thin air, invented? And, well, the conclusion was uh, the money was invented. The deposits didn't change. The reserves, they didn't even check how much do we have in reserves and was, was uh, untouched. Um, and it was simply newly credited to me. Now, if you look at the legal side, for those who are interested in this question, from the legal perspective, it's actually, um, it's most clear, it's, you know, clearly visible what's, what's going on. Because what the bank really does is when you when you get a loan, a mortgage, whatever, the moment you sign the loan contract, that can be considered and the bank does consider it as a promissory note that you've written. In other words, it's security. It's an IOU that you've issued as the borrower. Of course. And you promise, it's a promise to pay you, you to repay this money. So really you've issued a security, like when the, you know the the government issues treasuries you've issued your your loan your mortgage treasury your security okay the bank now says okay we're gonna buy that and it puts it on its balance sheet as an asset because now they have a claim on you because you promised to repay this money and you say at this point oh, actually i don't care about these details just give me the money <laughs> and if the banker is careful the banker will say you will find it in your account with us they mm -hmm. may carelessly say, oh, we've transferred it to your account. That would be technically wrong because no transfer takes place. That's what I confirmed in that empirical experiment that when I got the money, it was not transferred from any other account. I mean, you know, you can see uh, where does it come from and it didn't come from any other account inside the bank or outside the bank. So what is it? Well, at law, because the bank has, has got you a promissory note, it also, according to the loan contract, of course, owes you money as well, right? That's the money that you want in the first place. That's why you went to the bank for the loan. Now, that means there is an accounts payable liability that the bank has because, you know, it, it hasn't paid you, but it needs to pay you. And therefore, on its liability side of the balance sheet, it will also record the same amount that it's already recorded as an asset when it bought your IOU say $200,000, but they also owe you $200,000 in accounts payable liability. And now is the little trick. They will book this as a liability on their balance sheet, but of a different category. They won't actually say, oh, it's an accounts payable liability arising from the loan contract. That's really the truth. Well, it, it puts it in plain English. Yes, exactly. It puts it in plain English. Um, this other paper is called How how do banks create money and why can other firms not do the same? You can also Google it. It's open access as well. And so what they do is they don't book it as an accounts payable liability, which would be correct. They book it as, as a liability of another type, namely a customer claim on the bank that they call a bank deposit. Because what is a bank deposit? It's a claim by customers on the bank. And this is in English law well established for centuries that there is no such thing as a bank deposit. It, that's not a legal concept. It doesn't exist. All there is is a loan we've given to the bank. So deposits are actually loans that we've given to the bank. And that's what they put in their, on their liabilities. Well, we owe them money. That's how we record it. Now, the bank's record of the bank's debt to the public, that's what we call bank deposits. And that's our money supply. <laughs> and so, of course, they can invent it out of nothing. And so then suddenly, when you look at the legal side, it's not so magical or surprising that, of course, they can create money because really they're just adding more liabilities they have. And because the banking license gives them the right to put things on their balance sheet, accept deposits, the banking license is really the license to accept deposits, that means they can invent new liabilities on themselves which they do when they give out a loan. Now, of course, the borrower has no idea about these details, right? Mm 